Tonight, a 74-year-old man dies in a two-car crash near Kadena. And months after Port Augusta was battered with extreme weather, a local clubhouse roof close to collapsing. From our seven Spencer Gulf Studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening. A Kadena man has died in a two-car crash at Alford. The 74-year-old, now the 32nd person to die on our roads so far this year. Annabelle Francis reports from the scene as major crash investigators make yet another visit to the regions. Police were called here to Bewes Road after reports of two utes colliding. A 74-year-old man from Kadena died at the scene, his ute colliding with another before rolling onto its roof around 8am. The other driver, a 31-year-old man from Willamoka, rushed to the Wallaroo Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police at a loss with the state of our roads. Every South Australian, we're really concerned about the number of people who are involved in fatal um, crashes just in this last couple of months. SAPOL aren't sure what else they can do. Launching marketing campaign after marketing campaign, but still the message isn't getting through. The police commissioner reminding the public of their obligations and the risks taken when driving. Good people make bad decisions and uh, we just need people to think about how, they are, how they're behaving when they're on the road. Most fatality and serious injury crashes do happen on country roads. Bewes Road and Haldanes Road have been closed at the intersection of Hewitts Road and Axford Road while investigators examine the scene and the circumstances that led to the fatal crash. Maddie, this crash has brought the state's road death toll to a staggering 32, compared to 15 at the same time last year. With the New South Wales state election looming, Labor has announced its candidate to contest the seat of Barwon. Joshua Roberts Garnsey launching his campaign in Broken Hill. Less than three weeks before Broken Hill residents take to the polls, the Labor candidate for Barwon stopped by the far west. I think Broken Hill is a very undervalued part of this electorate. You know, it's, it's a wonderful city and when you look over the line overload, um, you look out at the city, you just understand it, it has such a great vibrancy. Joshua Roberts Garnsey enduring the blistering heat to go door knocking around town, asking locals what they think are the most pressing issues in the Silver City. So it's usually um, education, health, housing, cost of living. I mean, it keeps increasing constantly under this Liberal National Government, which continues to privatise all of our public assets. A former school teacher from Narrabri, Mr Roberts Garnsey made the switch to politics to be a voice for the children. I actually miss my students a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Um, they um, honestly are a big reason for why I'm running. I, I am concerned that they're not getting the appropriate sort of representation in the media. Shadow Minister for Regional New South Wales, Michael Veach, also making the trip to Broken Hill, throwing his support behind his colleague. When Joshua spoke to me about coming out, uh, to Broken Hill for the launch, I thought I had to come. I've, I've been to Broken Hill so many times, uh, I just could not miss another chance to get out here uh, and support Josh in his campaign. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. The Port Augusta Garden Club is raising concerns about the possibility its clubhouse ceiling will collapse. The matter was discussed at the first meeting of the year. As founder John Zwa opened the first meeting of the year, there was an issue hanging over their heads, the air conditioner. Club members worry the unit, which was damaged during a storm last year, could potentially fall, with clear signs of sagging around the roof visible. The repairs to the ceiling are really a bit beyond what they can manage. So being a council building that they use, they do need some help with that. There's also asbestos in the roof. And it could be one of the reasons that the council's reluctant to do anything at the moment because um, things may change and we might have to move anyway. Been involved with many garden clubs as guest speaker over the years, quite a lot of them around the state and this is the only one that I know of that has its own club rooms. Port Augusta City Council is currently discussing leases with various tenants to its buildings.
And I am aware that there has been some concerns raised around the roof um, at the Garden Club. Obviously, that is something that Council will continue to work with the Garden Club around. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. The long-awaited first stage of the Port Lincoln Foreshore project is almost complete. The new play space will bring people together, celebrate Bangala storytelling and culture and provide a safe place for families to connect. We're really excited to be able to bring uh, the play space to life on the 23rd of March. Uh, so that's our planned completion date and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how that finishes off in the coming weeks. And we'll have more details about opening celebrations soon. Still to come tonight, Breast Cancer Awareness Australia hosts a community forum in Port Lincoln. And Spencer Golf Seniors getting ready for the Masters Games on the Copper Coast. Welcome back. A breast cancer forum was held in Port Lincoln today. Locals impacted by the disease came together as an opportunity to connect with others and learn about the latest and emerging treatment options. Helping regional communities navigate difficult times. Breast Cancer Network Australia is travelling right around the country to regional areas to not only see what all the challenges are, but provide some practical solutions. We're very thrilled to be here in Port Lincoln as we kick off our first information forum for the year. Last year in 2017, the network spent the day listening to local voices about the challenges they face living away from the big cities. One of the joys for me is that we are now having chemotherapy delivered here in Port Lincoln and how special that is for regional people to not have to travel. This success stems back to sharing and connecting at forums just like this one. It's actually essential. We are so isolated. It helps, it helps you to realise that you are not alone. Diagnosed with breast cancer three times, Deb does everything she can to support others. If I can help someone, just one person, through their journey, then I feel like I have a, I feel like I've got a purpose. If you weren't able to attend today, there's no need to worry. If people have been affected by breast cancer and maybe have missed the opportunity to come together, we want you to reach out to Breast Cancer Network Australia because we can be here to help you navigate and link you in to local services. Alison Hall, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Copper Coast is back on hosting duties for next month's Masters Games. The region welcomed a record-breaking number of athletes back in 2021 and they're ready to do it all again. Competitiveness and a love for sport doesn't go away with age. The Games is great because it offers the opportunity for people to compete against like age and like ability um, competitors. With a huge variety of sports to choose from, there is something for everyone, including unique events like dragon boat racing. Coming off the back of a wildly successful 2021, the Copper Coast is looking to go above and beyond for this year's Games. We are very fortunate in the Copper Coast to have some state-of-the-art sporting facilities. Uh, it's a great place to visit, quite close to Adelaide, but also to a lot of other regions because a lot of competitors come from all over South Australia and even interstate. With an unprecedented 30 sports to choose from, Council is hoping to see an even bigger turnout. Organisers snagging former Adelaide Crows Ruckman as the face of this year's event. This time around, we would actually are very fortunate to have um, a Games Ambassador. So Sam Jacobs has come on board. Um, he's, he's a local um, who has, of course, done very well in his sporting career. And it's not too late to register. Head to the Visit Copper Coast website for more information. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Preparations underway for International Women's Day celebrations in Broken Hill. And it's almost footy season. Port Augusta players warm up with trial matches over the weekend. Welcome back. Broken Hills Community Radio Station is hosting a special broadcast tomorrow for International Women's Day. 2 Dry FM encouraging local women to come along. From volunteer to project officer. Hester Lyon was the perfect choice for Broken Hills International Women's Day event. 
It's really exciting to work on a project um, and kind of see it come to life. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's always fun to be involved with International Women's Day and be able to have a platform to share women's stories and um, experiences. First up tomorrow, the Silver City's Domestic Violence Committee hosting breakfast at the Astra Hotel. From there, presenters will head back to the Centre for Community. We've got three hours of special guests um, and we're also inviting people to come down and listen and engage live with our guests and hosts. Some of the station's younger volunteers are also getting involved in the broadcast. In the afternoon we're going to have some uh, a special hour with Megan Williams, our station manager, um, and then after that some pre-recorded segments. We've got an exciting history segment from a really young 2 Dry FM volunteer called Piper. Locals can take part by heading to the Centre for Community after breakfast or by turning your FM dial to 107.7. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Pre-season footy has begun in the Spencer Golf, with West Augusta having a busy weekend. The women's side played on Friday night against Central Augusta, while the men's seniors travelled to the Steel City to take on North Wyala. Among West's ranks was reporter Daniel Pizarro. The clash between Central Augusta and their Western rivals treated crowds to a thrilling game as the score lead changed several times. The win proved crucial for West Augusta to clamber ahead in the final quarter, winning by 29 points. It was an excellent comeback. I'm really proud of these girls. We've um, really come together and we keep adding to our list. I think as a team we're improving each week. We're having a few more numbers come out to training and to the game, which definitely helps. The following day, the Hawks senior side faced North Wyala in a one-off pre-season match. The visitors were strong overall, but lost by one goal. Impressed. Um... Sort of, we had a trial game last year and we probably showed we probably lacked a bit of fitness last year, but I think today we've definitely worked on our running and I think it showed towards the end of the game when we were still able to run it out. Yeah, no, it was a good game, but he boys played good, so yeah, it's good. The Hawks' performance so far has been very strong. Their next preseason game is in Roxby Downs, and after that, a few more interclubs before the season kicks off on April 15th. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hill PCYC is holding tryouts for this year's Nations of Origin. And you don't have long. They're set to get underway from 4pm on Thursday. Children who want to take part need to have been born between 2009 and 2010. The multi-sports tournament will be held on July 13 in Penrith, with boys and girls basketball and netball teams representing Broken Hill. If your child is interested, contact the PCYC. Stay with us after the break. Champions declared in the Spencer Golf softball and hockey comps. And showers forecast for Port Piri. We'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. Teams from across our region stepped up to the plate over the weekend to turn their Premiership hopes into reality. Wyala's Summer Hockey League wrapped up with a bang, while new champions lifted the shield in Port Lincoln softball. Here's Edward McCarroll. After an eventful season of summer hockey in Wyala, it was all on the line for top teams Cavaliers and the Wolf Pack this weekend. Facing off on Friday night, the Division I teams clashed in a tight contest, but ultimately it was the Cavaliers who came away with the chocolates. The final leaderboards revealing that Bush Chooks topped the Division II table after a heated final match against the Hackers. Switching over to softball now, where Port Lincoln teams, roadies and squaws have fought for their local premiership. Squaws Ella Simpson and Claire Norsworthy's big hits in the fifth innings together saw five teammates home. This left roadies with a mountain to climb in the last innings, but with Squaws making the outs, the roadies only got one run. This sealed the victory for Squaws, with their player Ella Blewett taking home best on ground. In Wyala softball, despite the Indians Maddie Wellgraven and Mel Sleep taking terrific catches at centre field, the Cats really found their rhythm in the fourth innings, connecting with the ball and getting those safe hits. Cats winning that game 7-5. In the other match, the Eagles defeated the Tigers 14-10, to 
putting them in prime position ahead of the semi-finals this weekend. In Port Piri, the Northern Demons continued an uneventful run of pre-season soccer matches, warming up for the return of the State League 2 season. The club has faced off with no longer Seaford Rangers, with neither club able to put one in the back of the net. The game was ended in a draw. Taking a look at Port Piri's men's basketball, the Ducks defeated the Pacers 46-44, while the Globetrotters ran away with the win against the Blues, winning by seven points. In the women's comp, the Pacers thumped the Patriots 45-15. The other game was much closer, with the Globetrotters just edging out rivals Jamestown by one point. That's it for this week's sports wrap. If you would like your team's results featured in our bulletin, please let us know through our Facebook page. Thanks, Eddie. Well, it's time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, a pretty mild day around the Gulf. For the most part, Maddie, yes, it was. But I do have some developing news out of the Lower Air Peninsula. A bushfire was burning out of control near Berg's Road this afternoon. At 4pm, the fire had already consumed 31 hectares of land as multiple crews worked on the ground and in the air. The CFS had issued a watch and act message for anyone along South Coast Road near Tumby Bay to prepare to leave their homes if it was safe to do so. But by 4 20, the threat was reduced. Conditions are constantly changing, but you can stay up to date with the very latest on the CFS website or Facebook page. Looking elsewhere now, sunny and 27 in Broken Hill today, partly cloudy around Port Pirie, 25 degrees, a shower to around the capital, 21 degrees there. Looking more broadly at today's weather map now, 28 was the warmest it got today. That was up in Cooper Pedy, 25 in Port Augusta and Woodna, 23 in Wyala and Kadena. Taking a look at the satellite image now, a weaker cold front will move over the southeast tonight, while a high pressure system southwest of Perth is extending a ridge over South Australia. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Westerly winds 15 to 20 knots, turning south to southwesterly gusts, reaching up to 25 knots near the York Peninsula coast early in the morning. Seas between 1 and 2 metres, while the swell will be south to southwesterly between 1.5 and 2.5 metres. Morning showers forecast for Port Lincoln tomorrow, set to reach a high of 21 degrees there. Shower 2 and 21 in Cleve as well. Woodna cloudy and 22. Becoming cloudy around Wyala on Wednesday, set to reach a high of 23 degrees. Partly cloudy and 25 in Port Augusta. Morning showers in Kadena down to 23 down to 13 tonight. A shower or two clearing around Port Piri set to reach a high of 24 degrees there, just 19 in Clare tomorrow after an overnight low of 12. Mostly sunny and 26 in Broken Hill, down to 11 degrees overnight. Taking a look further through the week now, starting with Thursday's forecast. Cloudy to partly cloudy conditions in Port Lincoln and Wyala, 23 degrees. 25 in Kadena and Port Piri, 26 on the way for Woodna and Port Augusta. Things are looking a little sunnier on Friday. Blue skies everywhere except for Port Lincoln, partly cloudy and 26 there. 31 in Woodna, Port Augusta and Port Pirie. 29 in Wyala and Kadena. 32 up in the Opal capital. And finally, taking our first look at how the first day of the weekend is looking, Port Augusta can expect a top of 35 degrees. There will be some wind about to bring the feels like temperature down. 31 in Wyala and Kadena on Saturday. 25 in Port Lincoln with gusts up to 30 kilometres an hour. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. I'll see you a little later with an update. It's back to you, Maddie. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Tuesday. I'm Madeline Kerr. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later. But until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.